Good morning. Do we have any preliminary matters before the jury? Okay, sure. Sure.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. All right. You can have a seat. Are right, your next witness? Your Honor, we call uh, Travis McGivern by video link. <laughs> Mr. McGivern, can you hear me? I can. All right. Can you do me a favor and just count to five for me so I can get you to pop up on my big screen here? One, two, three, four, five. All right. Now, can you turn your camera on? Yeah, I thought it was on. There Anyone? we go. Yes, sir. Now I can see okay. you. If you could raise your right hand, sir. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth under penalty of law? Yes, I do. All right, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, Mr. McGivern. Good morning. Could you please state your full name for the record? Travis Edward McGivern. And where do you currently live? Angeles, California. Defying from Los Angeles. Your current <laughs> occupation. A security professional. And a little over sixteen years. Do you know the plaintiff? Um, in LA, um, uh, when he wants to go in, I'll, I'll take three. He protected his children before. Um, yeah, just basically. And are you currently Mr. Depp's travel schedule is pretty regular. So when he's not in town, um, work slows down a little bit. So I have actually in the last six months, Picked up a full-time job, another client. When you for Mr. Depp, how often would you see him in person? Hard to say. When when he's in town, I saw him on a daily and or nightly basis. I work nights mostly. Um, Obviously, when he's out of town, that that changes. But um, yeah, when he's in town, pretty much daily. When did you first meet Miss Hurd? Hmm. Again, I couldn't give you an exact date, but I would say sometime in 2013, maybe summer 2013. And when you were working for Mr. Depp, how often would you see Ms. Hurd when they were in a relationship? In the beginning, not very often. Uh, at one point, two, became a little more frequent. Uh, when Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd were staying at the 
be a building together, how often would you actually be in their apartment with That would vary uh, depending on um, would be my, my best ask. Again, it depends. I wouldn't see them at all. An estimate would be a few times a week. During did you have occasion to death and misheard interrupt each other? I did, yes. And how often would No, anytime I was physically interacting. So I'd say a few. So how would you describe the interactions between Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard? It would depend. I mean, they were, it would depend. They were super loving, super, um, happy and then the next night they could be and um, initially when I first started working down at we were cool um, then more than moving forward well the longer they were there start more arguments between So I want to say like the end of the 20 they started staying and a few and I mean it was just verbal arguments um, yelling uh, it was typically wanting to get out of there and so there were trying, trying to convince um, yeah I mean lots of things like, uh, uh, you know and who was the name calling directed at typically Ms. And what do you recall Ms. Heard saying in those instances? Oh dear. Um, heard call him a Fucking deadbeat dad, if I can say that, I apologize to the court. If um, a fucking washed up, uh, fucking cunt, um, you name it, I she she's spewed it. How would you describe your own interactions with Miss Heard in the time that you worked for Mister Dub? Objection relevant. All right. What's the relevance of his interactions? Uh, his interactions when he was involved in the, when he was witnessing these altercations. Well, if you want to ask that question. Okay. Yes. How would you describe your interactions with Ms. Hurd when you were present during an altercation between her and Mr. Depp? For the most part, there wasn't really interaction. Um, there was, there were a few times where, um, I was trying to get Mr. Depp away from the situation and Ms. Heard didn't like my involvement in the situation. Um, and she, on one occasion, let me know how she felt about, about that. And what did she say to you in that instance? <clears throat> a, a lot. It was a, a lengthy, um, one-sided conversation um 
but she basically demeaned my career choice, called me a fucking yes man. Um, and honestly, there were parts of that where she, you know, she was like, how would you, how would you feel if someone was involved in your relationship? Which I sympathize with. Um, but yeah, she, she definitely threw some shade on me and, and my chosen career. Now, you mentioned that um, the arguments between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd increased when they returned from Australia in March 2015. Um, when did you first see Ms. Hurd when she returned from Australia? So I picked Ms. Hurd up from the airport on March 9th. Um, yeah, that was that was the first time I saw her when she got back. And who else was with her? A gentleman named Ben King, who I later found out, I didn't know who he was initially, but uh, later found out he was the house manager, or property estate manager of the, the place they were staying at in Australia. How would you describe Ms. Hurd's demeanor when you picked her up at the airport? She seemed normal, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, she was pleasant, she was polite, like, like she usually was. How much time did you spend with Ms. Hurd that day? Not a lot, but at least the car ride from LAX to downtown LA to the lofts. Um, couldn't tell you how long that took, but probably 45 minutes to an hour. Um, I believe I escorted them or helped them up to Penthouse 3 and was maybe in there for very, very briefly, a minute or two, and then um, and then I left. So overall, uh, let's let's estimate an hour. And how close to you? How close to Miss Heard were you that day? I mean, in the car where I'm driving, she's in the the seat right behind me to my right. So there's a few feet there. I think when I picked him up. I don't remember if I hugged her or not, but I know I'd probably grabbed some luggage. So I was, I was within a few feet. And what time of day was it when Ms. Hurd arrived at the airport? Early afternoon. Um, I wanna say they landed at around 1 p.m. What if any injuries did you observe on Ms. Hurd that day? I didn't notice any injuries. When did you first see Mr. Depp when he returned from Australia in March 2015? I don't know, to be honest. Um, I know it was after Miss Hurd came, but I couldn't give you an exact date. And what, if any, injuries did you observe on Mr. Depp when he returned from Australia? So Mr. Depp had his hand, his right hand, um, heavily wrapped. I didn't actually see an injury, but his hand was um, was wrapped. Now you mentioned that um, the arguments between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd increased after they returned from Australia. Um, what arguments do you recall specifically? Um, one in particular stands out, um, March 23rd, uh, a couple weeks after they got back, um, there was a, an incident in Penthouse 5 that I recall. And when did you start your shift that day? 11 p.m. was 
typically my start time. And where were you on your shift? So we, at the loft, there was um, kind of a makeshift command post CP or uh, guard shack or whatever it's called. Um, that was in a storage room connected to penthouse five via a patio. So you'd leave penthouse five, go to a patio, and then our CP was connected to that patio. That's typically where we hang out during during our shifts. And what time were you first contacted by Mr. Depp that evening? Again, I can't say precisely, but um, between four and probably around 4 a.m., 4.30, maybe. And what did you do after Mr. Depp contacted you? So when he, he texted me and um, I was downstairs. I don't remember exactly what I was doing, either getting some air, stretching my legs, or grabbing some food. Um, but I remember getting the text. I wasn't in the CP when I got the text. Um, he requested I meet him at Penthouse 5 and requested that I bring the nurse, his nurse that was working um, at that time with him. What was her name? Debbie Lloyd. Okay. And so what did you, did you um, go get Miss Lloyd? I did. So Miss, Miss Lloyd was staying at a hotel um, close by, probably about a half block away. And being that I was already down there, I felt uh, four in the morning, I wasn't gonna, and Mr. Depp wouldn't have wanted me to have her walk by herself. Um, but I wasn't gonna go get the truck either since I was down there already. So I walked over to the hotel. I, I believe I called the nurse just to make sure she woke up. Um, and then I walked to the hotel and I met her there. We walked over together to the Eastern Columbia building. Um, in the lobby, we ran into Miss Hurd. She was at the front desk talking to security or concierge, I'm not sure who. Um, Miss Lloyd stayed downstairs with Miss Hurd. I proceeded upstairs to meet Mr. Depp at Penthouse 5 as requested. Um, was hoping to get him out of there before Ms. Hurd came back up, um, just why because of past ex Sorry, why, sorry, why was that? Just because past experiences, when they would argue she would try to prevent us from leaving, um, to the point, I mean, she's held the elevator before, she's physically tried to keep Mr. Depp from leaving by grabbing his arm or standing in front of him. Um, I just wanted to get out of there to avoid that. And what happened when you got upstairs to the penthouse? So Mr. Depp was sitting in front of the, the front door of penthouse five. Um, I agree, he had some bags, I believe, like he was ready to go. Um, I greeted him, kind of got a feel for what was going on, tried to get him out of there. Um, as we were getting ready to leave, Miss Hurd and Miss Lloyd exited the elevator on the penthouse level. So they came back up and um, Mr. Depp and Miss Hurd decided they wanted to continue whatever conversation they were having. So I let them into penthouse five. Um, myself, Miss Lloyd, Mr. Depp and Miss Hurd entered penthouse five. 
I tried to stay out of their conversations as long as they were peaceful. So they were having a, a relatively peaceful conversation. So Miss Lloyd and I stood outside the door of Penthouse 5, had the door propped open um, to make sure we could hear what was going on, but kind of giving them their space uh, initially. And you said initially, what happened after that? So the conversation um, got a little louder, got a little more volatile. So Miss Lloyd and myself entered Penthouse Five um, just to be around um, to hopefully be able to not necessarily mediate, but just to be there. Um, so yeah, entered, stood a little closer to Mr. Depp. And what did you observe when you went back into the penthouse? So the argument continued. Um, there were moments of kind of normal conversation, uh, peaceful conversation, but then there were also moments of uh, yelling and anger from, from both of them. Um, and at some point I witnessed Ms. Heard throw a Red Bull can. So the loft is three levels. Um, Mr. Depp was down at the lower level, which is the kitchen area. There's a middle level, which is was turned into an office for Ms. Heard. And then the upper level was where the bedrooms were, but they were turned into a closet basically for Ms. Heard at that time. Um, Ms. Heard and her sister at that time, um, Whitney had, had come in. They were both on the, the middle level, the office level. Um, and I, I saw Ms. Heard throw a Red Bull can from her position, um, that struck Mr. Depp in the back. Anything else that you recall? At that point, I moved closer to Mr. Depp. I didn't care um, that I was in the middle of their conversation at that point. I didn't want my client getting hit with anything else. So I stood right by Mr. Depp. Um, the verbal uh, onslaught continued from, from both of them. Um, Mr. Depp was giving as good as he got at that point. Um, he was he was angry and agitated. Um, at one point, Miss Heard threw something else, uh, either a purse or some sort of bag or something that she had up there. Um, I was able to knock it away so it didn't hit him. At one point, she spit at him. Um, yeah, and then just just a lot of a lot of verbal vitriol from both of them. What do you remember Ms. Heard saying to Mr. Depp on this occasion? Jeez. Uh, anything and everything. Um, specifically, there was the you're fucking washed up. Um, you're a fucking cunt, uh, which which he called her as well. Um, you're again the the deadbeat dad shit. Um, yeah, I don't even remember what the fight was about, but it was um, it was pretty. The f word is my favorite word, and it was being thrown around to the point where I was uncomfortable, <laughs> so. And how did Mr. Depp respond to Ms. Heard's behavior? Oh, he was mad. He was upset, um, especially after she tried to spit on him. Um, at one point, Ms. Heard and her sister left. Um, 
Penthouse 5. I imagine they went into Penthouse 4 or possibly over to Penthouse 3. I don't know. They were all adjoining. Mr. Depp um, went upstairs and rearranged her closet for her. Um, threw down probably every rack of clothing and shoes. Um, threw one, at least one, down the stairs. Um, yeah, he, he, he was upset. Where was Miss Heard when Mr. Depp rearranged her closet, as he said? Can't say for sure, but she was not in penthouse five. She was either in four or three. And you mentioned Miss Heard's sister, Whitney. Do you recall when she arrived in the evening? So Whitney wasn't there when we first all walked into Penthouse 5. Um, when Miss Lloyd and I stepped out to give them some space, she must have, <laughs> excuse me, she must have come in at some point because she was in there when we got, when we walked back in. Did you see Miss Heard again that evening after Mr. Depp was in her closet? I did, yeah, she must have heard what was going on and not been too pleased. So she shortly after re-entered um, Penthouse 5 as I was trying to get Mr. Depp out of there. And what happened at that point? So her and her sister both came back in. Um, we were on the middle level so her office level of of penthouse five at that point um she was agitated mr depp was agitated uh, i felt it was time to get mr depp out of the situation so i stepped in between miss Hurd and mr depp um telling mr depp that we were that we were leaving and that it wasn't up to him anymore um at that point, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a, a fist and an arm come across my right shoulder. And uh, I heard and saw a closed fist um, contact Mr. Depp in the left side of his face. And whose fist was that? That was Miss Heard's fist, Amber Heard's fist. And where was, where was Whitney when this occurred? Can't say for sure, but I'm guessing, or my best guess is behind um, Amber. How did Mr. Depp respond when he was punched? <laughs> the initial look on his face, um, kind of mirrored mine, uh, kind of a look of shock, like what just happened, where'd that come from? Um, at that point, uh, I wasn't gonna let Mr. Depp get hit anymore. So I moved him down the last flight of stairs to the lower level um, and told him we're leaving. It, like it wasn't, it wasn't up to him anymore. Um, just for his safety. I, I didn't, again, I had let him get hit by a Red Bull can. I let him get punched. My job is to ensure the safety and well being of my clients. And I felt like I hadn't done that. So um, it was my time to do my job and get him out of there. And so uh, where did you go? So Ms. Hurd and her sister um, left Penthouse 5. Again, I don't know where they went. I'm assuming they went through Penthouse 4. We're either in 4 or 3. Mr. Depp um, was not pleased with me, <laughs> naturally. Um, he went into the bathroom for a couple minutes. Miss Lloyd talked to him. Um, 
and they came out and agreed that it was time to leave. So as, as we were leaving the front door, uh, Mr. Depp got right in my face. He was wearing sunglasses and, uh, maybe not sunglasses. He was wearing glasses, um, pulled them down, pointed to the left side of his face and told me that's your fault. And I agreed. Um, and then we proceeded to the vehicle and, and we left the loft. What did you see on the left side of Mr. Depp's face? Uh, it was, there was already a nice little, a nice little shiner. Um, definitely swollen and red. Uh, it wasn't black and blue yet, but it was definitely swollen and red. At any point during this in incident, did Mr. Depp throw anything at Ms. Heard? No. At any point, did Mr. Depp throw anything at anyone? No. At any time during this incident, did Mr. Depp physically respond to Ms. Heard? No. Do you recall uh, Ms. Heard's birthday party in April of 2016? I do. <laughs> uh, Mr. McGivern, during the incident we just discussed on March 23rd, um, what did Mr. Depp have on his right hand? So he had the same bandage that he had um, when he arrived from Australia. So it was heavily wrapped. Um, Yeah, a heavily wrapped bandage. I don't know what was underneath, but it was it was definitely wrapped. Do you recall whether it was a hard or a soft cast? I do not. Okay. Now, moving forward to Miss Hurd's birthday party in April 2016. Um, were you present at that dinner party? I was not. Okay. Um, I started my shift again around 11 p.m. The party was going on in Penthouse Five. Um, I don't typically take part in get-togethers, um, so I think I probably hung out in the CP. Um, shortly after I got there, the party kind of winded down. Um, I believe Mr. Depp got there, he was late, um, so I think he got there shortly after I started my shift. Um, he went into Penthouse 5, again the party wound down shortly thereafter, and then as far as I know Mr. Depp and Miss Hurd went back to Penthouse 3 um, shortly thereafter. Did you see Mr. Depp again that evening? That morning I did, early that morning, yeah. Uh, or the following morning. Um, again, I got a text. My best guess is around the same time, four. There were so many, so many incidences. Um, I, they're hard to keep straight, but um, probably around four or five that morning requesting my presence in penthouse three and how did what did you do after you received that text message entered went to penthouse three and what did you observe when you went to penthouse three again a verbal argument um i think it was made clear that some phones had been thrown off thrown out the window or something um, down to Broadway. Uh, Mr. Depp was again ready to leave to get out of the situation. He had his couple bags over his shoulders. Um, wanted to grab a few 
value bulls that we always used to grab when this happened. Um, some framed letters from uh, either Hunter S. Thompson or Marlon Brando. Um, Yeah, and then I, I believe uh, we left. Uh, I think I got him out of the situation again. We did look for the phone briefly, I think, on our way on our way back to West Hollywood. Um, but my main concern was getting him away from the situation. So I didn't find the phone. Um, and then we, we proceeded back to back to his suites or properties. What do you recall about Ms. Hurd's demeanor that evening when you saw her? Nothing out of the ordinary, nothing that, I mean, they were, they were arguing like usual in those circumstances, but nothing, nothing pops out. What if any injuries did you observe on Ms. Hurd that evening? I didn't notice any injuries. In your time working for Mr. Depp, have you ever seen Mr. Depp physically abuse Ms. Hurd? I have not. Now, you mentioned a couple occasions. How many times have you witnessed Ms. Hurd be physically abusive towards Mr. Depp? Uh, obviously, the March 23rd thing in Penthouse 5. Um, A physically abusive. I don't, I don't know how to define that, but I have seen her physically try to prevent him from leaving before. So grabbing, grabbing his arms, standing in front of him, pushing him. Um, yeah, again, I don't know if that's physically abusive, but that I've definitely seen her touch him on multiple occasions. Have you ever observed Mr. Depp use any drugs? I have. And what drugs have you seen Mr. Depp use? Uh, are you talking non-prescription drugs? Yes. Marijuana and uh, cocaine. How many times have you seen Mr. Depp use marijuana? Too many to count. I mean daily and how many times have you seen mr depp use cocaine a couple two how would you describe mr depp's demeanor when he's using marijuana uh, chill for lack of a better word um mellow uh, yeah, I, I don't know how to better describe it. Just super mellow. And how would you describe Mr. Depp's demeanor when you've seen him use cocaine? The same. Um, so I've seen him use it, like actual seen him use it a few times. I've, I've known of him using it other times and I feel like it, it levels him out. Um, yeah, I, I haven't noticed any difference when he when he's used it. Have you observed Mr. Depp consume alcohol? Absolutely. And how many times? Like marijuana, too many to count, pretty regularly. And on how many of those occasions did Mr. Depp appear to be drunk? It would depend on what you mean by drunk, but not, not many. Um, the only time I would say I've seen Mr. Depp drunk was uh, when he would fall asleep on the couch sitting up with his boots on. Um, other than that, Mr. Depp handles his liquor very well. 
How would you describe Mr. Depp's demeanor when you've seen him consume alcohol? No, no different than any other time. Again, super, super chill, super mellow. Um, yeah. Have you ever witnessed Miss Heard consume alcohol? I have. How many times would you estimate? <laughs> Again, too many to count. Um, she drank fairly regularly. Um, so I, I couldn't even give you a, a guesstimate. On how many of those occasions did you observe Miss Heard behaving drunk? Can't say I've, other than the, the incident on March 23rd where I didn't see her drinking, but I assume based on her behavior, um, she was drunk. Other than that, I can't say I've ever seen her uh, obviously drunk in my eyes. I have no further questions. All right, cross-examination, Mr. Rottenborn. Yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. McGivern. Good morning, sir. So you've, you said you've worked for Mr. Depp for about nine years, right? Correct. And he's, he hasn't been in town recently, so you have another job. Is that what you said? Yes. But you still consider yourself an employee of his even today, correct? I do. And when you do work for Mr. Depp, he pays your salary, right? Not on salary, he pays my my wage, yes. Okay. He pays the money that you make for working for him. Correct. And you've referred to him a few times during your testimony this morning as your client. <laughs> Is that right? Yes. So when you're working security for Mr. Depp, it's Mr. Depp and Mr. Depp alone that is your client, correct? That is not correct. Well, in the, the altercation that you testified about with Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp, you referred to, to only Mr. Depp as your client, and it was your job to keep your client safe. Do you remember that? Objection compound. I'll allow that. Go ahead. I do. Okay. So at least in that instance, he was your client, not Ms. Hurd, correct? Correct. Now... The evening of March 23rd, 2015, you actually walked into the middle of the argument with Debbie Lloyd, correct? Yes. So you testified earlier that you were downstairs and Ms. Hurd was downstairs in the lobby and you'd gotten Ms. Lloyd, but that's actually not accurate, is it? To the best of my recollection, that is accurate. In fact, when you and Miss Lloyd entered Penthouse 5, Amber and Mr. Depp were already in there having a verbal argument, correct? That is not correct. Can I approach you on? All right, yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. McGivern, do you see um, a document on the screen in front of you entitled Witness Statement of Travis McGivern? Uh, I do. Okay. And you, well, let, let me ask you this. Is that your, is that your address below? 
document's pretty small. Is there any way for me to, oh, there we go. Yes, it is. And that's, that's where you currently live? Hang on one sec, I'm sorry. That is a PO box. Okay, is that yours? It is. Okay. Um, now this is a witness statement that you prepared on behalf of Mr. Depp uh, in the UK trial, correct? Yeah, the, the statement went away. Oh, there it is. You um, see it? Yes, it is. And who drafted this statement? Myself, along with an attorney, I don't remember exactly who. Was it Adam Waldman? At that point, I don't believe it was, no. If you go to paragraph five, please, on the second page, and, and you understood when you wrote this statement that this was going to be submitted to the court in the UK trial that Mr. Depp brought, and that this was your testimony on behalf of Mr. Depp, correct? Yes. And about two thirds of the way through paragraph five, there's a sentence that says, when Ms. Lloyd and I entered his residence, Ms. Heard and Mr. Depp were having a verbal argument. Is that correct? That I read that right? That is, yes. So that doesn't say anything about you meeting Ms. Hurd in the lobby of the Eastern Columbia building, does it? No, it does not. And when you entered the penthouse, you can't recall the specifics of what the argument was about, correct? I'll take that. <clears throat> no, like what they were fighting about? Absolutely, no, I don't. And you don't know anything about what caused the argument in the first place, correct? I do not. But you do remember Mr. Depp being very angry, right? I remember both of them being very angry, yes. And you say that he gave as good as he got when it came to what they were saying to each other, right? Yes. You'd say they were both being verbally abusive to one another? Yes. And you testified that at some point, Ms. Heard, Ms. Heard was on the, the, the mezzanine level, right? The, the level of her office, so kind of the middle level of the penthouse? That's correct. And Mr. Depp was on the lower level, correct? When you entered the penthouse? So when Ms. Lloyd and I re-entered the penthouse, yes, that's where they were. And you weren't preventing Mr. Depp from leaving at any time, correct? Preventing him from leaving? I was encouraging him to leave. Right. And he could have, when he was on that lower level of the penthouse, he could have left at that point, correct? You wouldn't have prevented that. No, I would not have. Um, but instead, at some point, he walked up to the me mezzanine and, as you say, he rearranged Ms. Hurd's closet. Right? Well, that wasn't on the mezzanine level, that was on the top level. Um, but yeah, he rearranged the closet. So he traveled up two levels in the penthouse to throw down every rack of clothing that she had, right? I don't know about every rack, but he, he definitely threw down some racks of clothes and shoes. Okay, I, be I believe you said every rack, so that's just why I was asking you to confirm that. You said he threw a rack down the stairs, correct? Yes. Okay. And then at that point, he went back downstairs? To the mezzanine level, yes. Now, that wasn't the only time you learned of Mr. Depp um, causing damage in Penthouse 5, correct? Couldn't say for sure. Uh, nothing, nothing's coming to mind. He had, uh, you said he had something on his hand from his injury that he sustained in Australia, right? Yes, his hand was wrapped. 
Now, you weren't in Australia uh, with Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard, correct? I was not. And what he had on his hand could have been a hard cast, correct? Sure. I have, I have no idea what was under the wrap. And isn't it true that while he was on the mezzanine level and Miss Heard uh, and, and her sister were there, <laughs> that he was reaching for Amber's hair while he was trying to hit her with that cast, correct? That is not correct. And you say that you can't say for sure where Whitney was standing on the mezzanine level during this altercation, correct? That is correct. And it's it's possible that she was standing in between Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard then, correct? No. Well, you say you can't say for sure where she was standing. So she could have been standing in between Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard, right? No, because I stepped in between Ms. Heard and Mr. Depp. Um, so she definitely wasn't standing in between them. Well, in fact, you saw Mr. Depp uh, push or shove Whitney Heard, correct? Absolutely not. And it was only after Mr. Depp pushed Whitney that Amber stepped forward and punched him in the face. Isn't that right? That is not correct. Now, moving on to April 2016, you weren't there for the party, you said, correct? I, uh, I started my shift while the party was going on. But you weren't in with the party goers, you said, right? That's correct. And you, you said at some point, Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard went back to Penthouse 3. Um, but you have no idea what went on between them in Penthouse 3 while you weren't there, correct? I do not. And you said that you gave uh, security services to Mr. Depp primarily uh, in Los Angeles. Is that right? Yes. A little bit of travel, but mostly in, in LA. Okay. Where'd you travel to? Um, Vegas. Uh, up north, we did a road trip, kind of, they called it their honeymoon. Um, so Napa, San Francisco, Big Sur, um, San Jose. Uh, I've, those are all with Miss Heard. I've taken Mr. Depp to China before. Um, Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then a bunch of, bunch of local stuff, Palm Springs, Santa Barbara, um, stuff like that. Okay. You weren't on a plane flight from Boston to Los Angeles with Mr. Depp and Amber in May, 2014, correct? I was not. And you weren't at the Hicksville trailer palace in May or June of 2013, correct? With them? I was not. You, uh, you were never in the Bahamas with them, including in August, 2014, correct? I was not. You were not in the Bahamas with them in December of 2015, correct? I was not. You were not in Tokyo with them in January of 2015, correct? I was not. You were not in the Eastern Columbia building with them on the evening of December 15th, 2015, correct? I don't know. Um, to the best if of your were, recollection. Yeah, if they were at the lofts, I typically worked every night, but nothing about December 15th is popping into my head. Okay. And you definitely were not in the Eastern Columbia building with them on the night of May 21st, 2016, were you? I was not. Okay. Um, nothing further. Thank you, Mr. McGill. All right. Redirect? No, Your Honor. All right. Is this, Thanks, witness, all right, is this witness subject to recall? Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. McGibbon, you're, you're subject to recall. So uh, just to let you know, uh, you're still subject to the rule on witnesses. So you cannot talk to anybody about your testimony or uh, watch any of the proceedings of this case. Okay, sir? Understood, ma'am. All right, thank you. Have a good day. You do the same. Thank you. Thank you.
Your next witness. Um, Mr. Depp calls Jack Wiggum, who should be waiting in the electronic lobby. I've got him. <coughs> All right, Mr. Wiggum, can you hear me, sir? Yes, ma'am. Could you do me a favor and just count to one to five for me? Sure. One, two, three, four, five. All right, thank you, sir. Can you raise your right hand? Do you swear firm tell the truth under penalty of law? Yes. Okay, thank you, sir. Good morning, Mr. Wiggum. Would you please state your full name for the record? Sure, it's uh, Jack Wiggum. Where do you live, Mr. Wiggum? I live in Los Angeles. Where, if at all, did you earn your undergraduate degree? I earned a degree in finance from the University of Florida. In what year, if any, did you graduate from the University of Florida? 1998. Do you have any graduate degrees, Mr. Wiggum? I do. I have a law degree also from the University of Florida uh, and graduated in 2002. Mr. Wiggum, what do you currently do for a living? I'm currently a, a manager representative for artists. Would you please describe, Mr. Wiggum, for the jury what a manager representative does? So we, you know, represent writers, directors, actors, actresses, uh, mostly in their pursuit of artistic endeavors. So I primarily focus on, on film and television, but, you know, all artistic endeavors. How does a manager representative get paid? Uh, typically via a commission. What so industry standard is kind of 10% of whatever the deal is. And Mr. Wiggum, what did you do professionally after you earned your JD at the University of Florida? I was an attorney at uh, a firm called Weil, Gottschall and Mangies um, for approximately three years. Uh, and then I segued from there to uh, a talent agency um, called CAA, Creative Artist Agency. In what year did you start work at CAA? I started there in April of 2004. And Mr. Wiggum, in what capacity did you start working at CAA? I started at the bottom, uh, in the mailroom, uh, shopping mail, and then uh, became a, an assistant for one of the manager partners. And then in 2007, I believe I was from, I became an agent. And then right around 2014, I think, uh, I began co-running the uh, film and talent department there. And when your job responsibilities shifted to becoming an agent at CAA, would you please describe briefly for the jury what that entailed? Sure. We were, you know, also looking out for artistic endeavors on behalf of the client, so writers, directors, actors, actresses, but we were also negotiating deals uh, and, you know, really pursuing film, television, producing deals on behalf of the clients. Mr. Wiggum, did there come a time when you left CAA? I did. I, I left in, in August of 2020. What, if anything, did you do professionally after you left CAA in August of 2020? So I co-founded a, a management production company called Range Media Partners in, in August of 2020 and have been working there ever since. What type of company is Range Media Partners? It's a management representation production company. Do you know Johnny Depp? I do. Mr. Wiggum, when did you first meet Mr. Depp? I, I, I actually met him very briefly in, on the set of Black Mass, which was probably, I don't know, 2014 or 15. And then I met him very briefly at a, one of his music shows. Uh, but more substantively, I, I sat with him, uh, I believe, in the, the fall of 2016. Did there come a time, Mr. Wiggum, when you became... Mr. Depp's agent? Yes. When was that? Right, right around October, I believe, fall of 2016. Was that when you were still with CAA? Yes. When you first started with Mr. Depp as his agent, who, if anyone, assisted, assisted you? 
I had two partners that I worked with Johnny. Uh, one was Brian Lord and the other was Christian Carino. Since starting to work with Mr. Depp as his agent in October 2016, have you had opportunities to observe him interacting with yourself and others? Yes. How would you describe for the jury Mr. Depp's demeanor on those occasions? Objection relevant. All right. What's the relevance? The relevance is how he how he conducts himself professionally, which relates to his reputation, which is at issue. All right, I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. You may answer the question, Mr. Warren. Uh, sure. Uh, I, Johnny was always very nice, sweet, in fact, um, you know, artistic, uh, polite, and, you know, very thoughtful, you know, kind of uniquely thoughtful about how are you doing? How's your family? You know, he, he, was, he was just a thoughtful person. He always has been. Did he seem gen did he seem genuine? Objection leading. Oh, I'll sustain the objection. To what extent, if any, did he seem genuine? Obje I'm going to object. How how would he know? Speculation. I'm not sure what objection that is. Or a speculation. A speculation. Foundation. I, I believe he can he can testify right. as to that. I'll allow it. Go ahead. His her, her I, honor I, says her honor says you may answer that question. Okay. Uh, I found Johnny to be authentic. You know, it was a, a genuine uh, kindness. And Mr. Wiggum, prior to your first becoming Mr. Depp's agent in 2016, October of 2016, who was his agent prior to that? I believe it was um, Tracy Jacobs at a company called UTA. And before you took over from Tracy Jacobs as Mr. Depp's agent, what, if any, research or due diligence did you do with respect to him? Objection uh, relevance? Right. What, what's yeah. Again, relevance? Your Honor, it goes to reputation, which is this, the core of the I issue. I'll, the sustain the, I'll sustain the objection. Next uh, question. Thank you, Your Honor. Were you aware of Mr. Depp's professional reputation at the time you became his agent in October of 2016? I would say objection leading, and I think it's going to call for hearsay. I'll overrule at this point. Go ahead. I believe I was. What was your understanding, if any, of Mr. Depp's professional reputation at the time you began representing him as his agent in the fall of 2016? Uh, Johnny's reputation, in my opinion, was very, he was very well regarded and respected by peers uh, in the artistic community. Um, your, uh, Your Honor, I'm, I'm going to object. He, first of all, he says in his opinion, which he's not an expert witness, and second, he's now going into hearsay. No, I'll, I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. Her, Mr. Wiggum, Her yeah. Honor, you may continue. Uh, well regarded, respected, extremely talented, artistic. Are you familiar, Mr. Wiggum, with the distinction between an independent film and a studio film? I, I believe I am. What, if any, difference is there between an independent film on one hand and a studio film on the other? So in, in, in layman's terms, I'd say that, you know, a studio film is a bigger budgeted film. It's, it has a distributor, a studio in place. So when you think of Disney, uh, Marvel, Universal, these kind of, these are big companies, uh, they're, they're bigger budgeted and bigger fees. Uh, and then independents, like we call them indies, uh, typically are smaller budgeted, more artistically minded, smaller fees, uh, and often don't have distribution when they're made. Starting in October 2016, what types of opportunities have you pursued on Mr. Depp's behalf? Uh, a, a wide variety, you know, uh, Primarily, I would say, focused on, on film, television, and producing. What, if any, roles did Mr. Depp have in progress as of that time, fall of 2016, going into calendar year 2017? All right, so we, we inherited some deals. It, it was, uh, there was two films, as I remember, that were going to go back to back. Uh, one was City of Lies, the notorious B.I.G. film, and the other was Murder on the Orient Express. So those those were filmed 
almost at the same time. Uh, and then, and, and they had pre-existing deals uh, that we serviced. And then he had Fantastic Beasts, Crimes of Grindelwald uh, as well. And then we were, we were in the process, we ended up finishing the sixth film negotiation on Pirates of the Caribbean. Mr. Wiggum, you mentioned City of Lies. When was that film actually shot? To the best of my memory, it was shot right, you know, at the very end, mostly the beginning of 2017. What was Mr. Depp's compensation for City of Lies? I believe it was $8 million. And you mentioned Murder on the Orient Express. When was that shot? So it, it was shot at almost the same time. I actually can't remember it, it, which one went first. They were both shot predominantly, call it January to April of 2017. I remember us having to work out dates, uh, but they were, it was the beginning of 2017. What was Mr. Depp's compensation for murder on the Orient Express? I, if memory serves me, I think it was $10 million. Uh, was murder a studio film or an independent, or what you call an indie film? It was a studio film, it was uh, Fox. Mr. Wiggum, you also mentioned Fantastic Beasts 2, Crimes of Grindelwald. When was that film shot? I believe that film was shot in the fall of 2017. What was Mr. Depp's compensation for Crimes of Grindelwald? Again, that, that deal predated us. I think it was $13.5 million if I remember correctly. Was Crimes of Grindelwald a studio film or an indie film? It was studio. It was uh, Warner Brothers. And backing up a bit, Mr. Wiggum, uh, what was the first business opportunity you were able to secure for Mr. Depp after he came to you and CAA in the fall of 2016? So I believe it was... we. 2017 was really, it was busy. He, we had a slot that summer and he wanted to do a smaller film and it, it was uh, a professor, I believe. How much compensation, if any, did he receive for performing in that smaller film, The Professor? That deal was uh, three and a half million. Was The Professor an independent film or was it a studio film? It was independent. And Mr. Wiggum, how, if at all, was CAA compensated for closing the deal on the professor? So it, it would have been the normal 10% uh, of the deal. So if the deal was three, three and a half million, the commission would be $350,000 to the agency. Mr. Wiggum, was 2017 a typical year for Mr. Depp in terms of the workload uh, for an actor of his caliber and track record? Objection leading. Overruled, I'll allow it, Graham. And yes. What other roles, if any, were you able to secure for Mr. Depp during your tenure at CAA before you went to the new company? Uh, a film called Waiting for the Barbarians uh, and a film called Minamata. When was Waiting for the Barbarian shot? So Waiting for the Barbarians was uh, fall of 2018. What, if any, plans did you and Mr. Depp have for 2018, calendar year 2018? We had, we had a very specific plan for that year because 2017 was busy and he had, he had done three studio films and I remember him wanting to take time off to rest and be with his kids for first half of the year. And then he wanted to go on a, a, the music tour, which always just made him really happy. And so that was the summer. 
of 2018, and then and then we had the slot for two, for the fall of 2018, and uh, that's where we spent a lot of time thinking about what that movie was going to be and waiting for the Barbarians was kind of a little gift because it was based on a J.M. Cootsie novel and Johnny's, you know, very well read and knew, knew the literature, the, the underlying book. And, the, and Mark Rylance was in the film and it was just like a dream actor that he always wanted to work with. What was Mr. Depp paid for Waiting for the Barbarians? One million dollars. And I apologize if you've already said this, so was Waiting for the Barbarians an independent film or a studio film? Uh, it was an indie, independent. Mr. Wiggum, you also mentioned the film Minimata. When was that film shot? That, that was the very beginning of 2019. So I think January start. Was Minimata an indie film or a studio film? It was uh, independent. How much was Mr. Depp ultimately paid for Minimata? So his, 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 fee, his fee became, it was $3 million. What, if any, role did Mr. Depp play in Pirates of the Caribbean 5? He played uh, Captain Jack Sparrow. Was he paid an actor's fee for that film? Uh, uh, technically, it was before my tenure, uh, so, uh, but yes, I would assume he was. Mr. Wiggum, would you please explain for the jury what are residual or back-end rights? I think the easiest way to explain a back-end is, is it's an ownership stake on behalf of the artist uh, in the success of the movie and typically is only granted to stars of a certain stature. And in addition to the fee, Mr. Depp, the upfront fee that Mr. Depp was paid for Fantastic Beast 5, which I know preceded you, uh, what, if any, did understand, what if any understanding do you have of whether Mr. Depp had any back-end rights for Pirates 5? Objection, Your Honor. Foundation, foundation. He said that deal was uh, at, at the other agency, and he doesn't. He wasn't. A lot of he knows it. That's fine. Go ahead. Her Honor says uh, you may answer you, the question. Yeah, you, so you initially said Fantastic Beast. I think you meant Pirate Five. Uh, oh, I, I apologize. Pirates, I, I did mean yeah. for Pirates Five. Uh, what, if any, back end did Mr. Depp have for Pirates Five? Uh, I don't know what it was. I know that he had one. To, to what extent, if any, did Mr. Depp ever have a deal to perform in Pirate 6? So when we started representing him, I remember Brian Lord and myself finishing a deal that had started at the previous agency. Objection, and Your Honor. May we approach? It. Okay. Hold on a minute. For the interruption, Mr. Wiggum, uh, Her Honor says you may answer the question, which I believe is, to what extent, uh, if any, did Mr. Depp have, ever have a deal to perform in Pirates 6? So we, we finished the deal, and then we closed the deal at $22.5 million for that film, is my memory. Which studio, which studio was involved in the Pirates series, including Pirates 6? So that was uh, Disney. Was Disney the studio involved in all of the Pirates movies? Yes. 
What role uh, was Mr. Depp to play in Pirate 6? Objection calls for speculation. Uh, I'll allow it. And hearsay. I'll allow it. Captain Jack Sparrow. Was the $22.5 million to be paid to Mr. Depp by Disney or by some other entity? Disney. And when was that $22.5 million to be paid uh, to Mr. Depp? It would be paid when he shoots it. We call it principal photography, so when the film shoots. Who was the producer of the Pirates franchise? Jerry Bruckheimer. Does Mr. Bruckheimer work for Disney? No. In 2017, to what extent, if any, was Mr. Bruckheimer supportive of Mr. Depp remaining in the Pirates franchise? Objection, Your Honor, calls for hearing. I'll, I'll sustain objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Putting aside his role in the Pirates films, did Mr. Depp have any other affiliations with Disney in 2017? Yes. What were those affiliations? He, if I remember in the spring, you know, he, he went down to Disneyland and, and put on the Captain Jack Sparrow outfit and uh, wardrobe and, and went into the ride. Disney, he and Disney had worked out a fun little thing where he was going to take the place of the automated, you know, Captain Jack Sparrow on the, on the pirates ride. And, so he would kind of surprise people as they were going along there. And so I remember he did that. And then in 2000, in May of 2017, we, uh, he went to uh, Disney Shanghai to help open the Pirates of the Caribbean ride there. Uh, what, if anything, did those affiliations signify about the status of Mr. Depp's relationship with Disney as of that time? Uh, Objection, Your Honor. Uh, I'll, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, to what extent, if any, did Mr. Depp socialize with anyone at Disney in 2017, to the extent you know? Objection, Your Honor. Uh, I'll allow it to the extent he knows. Do you know whether Mr. Depp socialized with Disney during 2017? Objection, Your Honor. I do. Uh, if you could say foundation. How, how do you know that Mr. Depp Socialized with Disney in calendar year 2017. Because that was it. Who, um, will you please describe for the three what you mean when you said you were there when Mr. Depp socialized with Disney? We had a dinner in spring of 2017 with myself, uh, Jack Heimer, and Sean Daly, uh, who was running the film, you know, was running, was president of Disney. How did the dinner conclude? Great. I mean, great. Very nice. It was, it was a great dinner. As of early December 2018, so we're now in December of 2018, uh, what, if anything, was your understanding of the status of whether Mr. Depp would act Appear in pipes. Objection on calls for hearsay. Right. Objection that question. Mr. Whitman, there come a time when you saw an op ed that purportedly written by Amber Heard that appeared in the Washington Post. Yes. Mr. Whitman, I would like to show you, please, uh, what was entered previously into evidence as plaintiffs exhibit one. Uh, Mr. Gordon, would you please pull up? If specific one, and Your Honor, uh, may we please publish this to the jury as previously Thank you. Um, Mr. Mr. Wiggum, Wiggum, have you have ever, you ever seen, seen this document before? Yes. What is it? It's, I believe it's the uh, opinionated op-ed uh, in the Washington Post that Ms. Heard in plaintiff's exhibit one. Um, and drawing your attention specifically to the third paragraph of the op-ed, Ms. Hurd writes, quote, two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse, and I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women, for women who speak out, unquote. 
What, if anything, what, if any, understanding do you have of that reference? That it was regarding Johnny and uh, their relationship. Directing your attention, uh, Tom, if we could just move back up to the first page of Exhibit 1. Uh, directing your attention to the title of the article, quote, Amber Heard, colon, I spoke up against sexual violence, unquote. What, if any, understanding do you have of that reference? Objection, Your Honor. It's irrelevant what his understanding is. Uh, I'll, I'll allow it. That, that, was, uh, that was rather shocking, I remember, because it was the first time I'd heard an allegation of sexual abuse. And against whom was the allegation of sexual abuse? Objection, Your Honor. How would you know? I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Mr. Wiggum, directing your attention to the fifth paragraph of Plaintiff's Exhibit 1, Ms. Hurd writes, quote, I had the rare vantage point of seeing in real time how institutions protect men accused of abuse, unquote. To what does that refer? Objection, Your Honor. How would he know what it was? Uh, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Uh, Mr. Gibson, if you would please take down Plaintiff's Exhibit 1. Mr. Wiggum, how, if at all, was Ms. Hurd's op-ed different from other articles about the couple's relationship? Um, objection, Your Honor. Calls for hearsay foundation. All right. Other articles? Mr. Wiggum, had you seen other articles in the course of your duties as Mr. Depp's agent about Amber Hurd and Johnny Depp? Uh, objection, Your Honor. Still yes. calls for hearsay uh, foundation. I'll allow it. Thank you. Um, how, if at all, was the op-ed different from other articles you had read about the Johnny Depp Amber Heard relationship. It, you know, it was a first-person account coming from the victim. Uh, it's extremely impactful. Impactful in a in a good or a bad way. For, on, you know, with respect to Johnny, it, it was it was catastrophic because it was coming from. You, you know, uh, a first-person account. It was not from a journalist. It was not from someone observing. It was from someone saying, this happened to me. Mr. Wiggum, between December 18, 2018, the date of the op-ed, and October 2020, did Mr. Depp perform in any studio films? Sorry, could you, could you just repeat the dates? Between December 18th, 2018, which is the date that Ms. Hurd's op-ed appeared, and October 2020, to what extent, if any, did Mr. Depp perform in any studio films? Zero. No studio films. How, if at all, did Ms. Hurd's op-ed impact Mr. Depp's ability to land roles in studio films between December 2018 and October 2020. Objection, Your Honor. Calls for hearsay foundation and expert. I'll sustain that objection. Next. Are you near the end, Mr. Chu? I just want to make sure because it's coming up on a morning break. Okay. I, I'm, I have ahead. probably five minutes. Okay. Time. That's good. Go ahead. Uh, what effect, if any, did the op-ed have on the release of Minamata, the indie film you mentioned objection, earlier? Objection, Your Honor. Calls for hearsay, spe hearsay speculation. He's, he worked on the foundation. Sure. Yes, Your Honor. What happened, Mr. Wiggum, after the op-ed, but before October 2020, with respect to Minimata? So the, the op-ed came out in December, and it was, it was right as we were going on Christmas break, and uh, our Minimata was supposed to start in January, and I, I remember it was very, very difficult to keep Minamata together. The, the financing became shaky. The 
the budget had to come down, Johnny's fee came down in order to save the movie. Tom, if you would please pull up plaintiff's exhibit 584, and we're not asking to publish it because it does not come in. Uh, this is an email chain with the subject line, quote, uh, Johnny Depp's Jack Sparrow won't return. I object to him reading right. even from that to the jury. That's fine, Your Honor. We okay. can. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Wiggum, do you recognize this email chain? I, yes, now that I'm looking at it. What is the date of this email chain? Uh, I think it, December 20th. December 20th of what year, sir? Sorry, uh, December 20th of 2018. Mr. Wiggum, Mr. Wiggum, directing your attention to the middle email message on Plaintiff's Exhibit 584, did you receive this message from Christian Carino in or about December 20th, 2018 at 326 p.m.? Your Honor, I'm going to object because it's a hearsay document. He's asking questions from the hearsay uh, document. I'll it's allow that. I'll, allow, I'll allow that question. Let's see where we go. Her Honor said you may answer that question. Yes, I, he's asked, I see, you know, I see what he's asking me. Would you please explain to the jury what the message was about? Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Hearsay, he's asking him to, to essentially say what we'll approach for a moment. Tom, if you could please take that down. Mr. Wiggum, did there come a time after Ms. Hurd's publication of the op-ed on December 18, 2018, but before October 2020, that you learned more about Disney's plans about whether it would cast Mr. Depp in Pirate 6. Objection, hearsay. All right. I'm just asking whether he... he... Okay, I'll allow, allow that. Yes. When did that happen? In 2019. What yeah. happened... Okay. Go ahead. No, Your Honor, no, next, next question. What ha what happened in 2019 with respect to Disney, your learning about Disney's plans, uh, whether to use Mr. Depp in Pirate 6? Objection, hearsay. Uh, what happened? So, yes. It, I'll allow what happened, go ahead. It became clear they were going in a different direction. When did you learn that Disney was going in a different direction and no longer planned to use Mr. Depp in Pirate 6? Early 2019. Who is Margot Robbie? She's a fantastic actress. Um, she's a client at CAA. What, if anything, did you learn about the role Margot Robbie would be playing in Pirate 6? I think that calls for hearsay. Uh, Again, Your Honor, I'm going to object. Uh, I'll overrule the objection. I, I learned that they were developing a pirates project for her to star in. After you learned that Disney was going in a different direction in early 2019 and no longer planned to use Mr. Depp, did you, to what extent did you reach out to Jerry Bruckheimer or Sean Bailey? Objection, Your Honor. But it does not, Your Honor. Uh, overruled. I'll allow it. Thank you, Your Honor. A lot. Did you reach out to Mr. Bruckheimer and Mr. 
Bailey, jointly or separately? Separately. What, if anything, was the result of your outreach to Mr. Bruckheimer and Mr. Bailey? The judge calls for hearsay. Yeah. Calls for hearsay. Yes, Chief. I'm just asking what the result was. Well, it's still based on the communication to the bench. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. After your outreach to Mr. Bailey and, or strike that, was your outreach to Mr. Bruckheimer and Mr. Bailey successful? Objection leading. I'll allow it. No. I successfully made contact with them, but I was not successful in rescuing pirates for Johnny. When was the last time you discussed Mr. Depp's role in Pirate 6 with Jerry Bruckheimer, Sean Bailey, or anyone else at Disney? I'm going to object, Your Honor, on hearsay. Uh, overruled. 2019, I believe. In addition to Pirate 6, did Mr. Depp lose other films between December 2018 and October 2020 because of Ms. Hurd's op-ed? Objection. I'll sustain the objection. In, a, in addition to Pirate 6, did Mr. Depp lose any other films between December 2018 and October 20? Objection, Your Honor. First of all, I don't think he testified that he lost Pirate 6. Second of all, She's, she's now contradicting uh, the witness's uh, testimony, oh, yeah. no, which is no, no, in, inappropriate. The question both of you, the other both way. of you, overruled. Let's go. Next, go ahead and answer the question. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. After, after the op-ed, it was impossible to get him a studio film, which is what we normally would have been focused on in that time period. Mr. Wiggum, to what extent did COVID or strike that. To what extent, if any, did COVID, did COVID impact Mr. Depp's opportunities prior to October 2020? I, I think it had an effect on, on Johnny, like, uh, like other actors to some degree. Um, but we, we were still doing business, especially on behalf of, you know, bigger stars that greenlit films. And so what was happening was we would we would close deals or you know put together a movie and then just set the start date for whenever people could get together and, and actually shoot the movie. Mr. Wiggum, in your many interactions with Mr. Depp, have you ever seen him angry? Objection, Your Honor. It's uh, leading. Uh, I'll sustain us to leading. In your many interactions, thank you, Your Honor. In, in your many interactions with Mr. Depp. Uh, to what extent, if any, have you ever seen him lose his temper? I never have, actually. To what extent, if any, has Mr. Depp ever raised his voice in your presence? No, he never has. Mr. Wiggum, to what extent have you ever seen Mr. Depp engage in any violence? Never. Mr. Wiggum, other than Ms. Hurd, are you aware of any other woman who has ever accused Mr. Depp of physical abuse? Objection, leading, foundation, and hearsay. Uh, uh, I'll sustain the objection to leading. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wiggum. All right. Uh, I'll pass the witness. All right, Mr. Wiggum, we'll do cross-examination in about 15 minutes. I'm going to take a 15-minute morning recess, okay, sir? All right, ladies and gentlemen, okay. we'll go ahead and take our morning recess. Uh, do not discuss the case with anybody and don't do any outside research, okay? Mr. Wiggum, what I'll do is put you in the lobby, and then I'll, you won't see anything. In about 15 minutes, I'll bring you back, okay? Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, at this point, we'll just come back at noon, okay? All right, All right thank you.